Hey guys, it's been a while, but I'm back. Back with a new template, a free template, free to download for all on my Patreon website, but I said free for all. Uh, on top of that, for my patrons, and I'm always grateful to them, um, there will be uh, some premium templates like the one you can see over here and the one over here, the glassy one, which I personally really like. Uh, but in this brief uh, walkthrough, I'll show you a bit about how this template works, what you can change, what makes it tick, uh, what happens underneath the hood. But uh, first and foremost, it's about how you use it. Now, first things first, uh, I strongly advise you guys that you use this in Fusion standalone. Now, don't worry if you don't have a DaVinci Resolve Studio and uh, you only have the free version, then there is no free version as such associated with it so you think however there is still a version version 9.02 that is free for all to download so as of recording this tutorial or walkthrough it is still available and i'll show it to you guys here uh, you will need to scroll down in the latest downloads uh, quite a bit to july 2018 and there you can find the free version of fusion all right let's get started the free template now, um, I first want to show you guys as to how it sort of works. So this section over here, it's called rotating letters, right? This basically builds the actual characters, the, the text, if you will. There's a section underneath that builds the rest of the canvas. Um, here at the top, you'll see the variables or the things you can easily change. So I'll go through it in a moment. And here it all comes together in a very simple merge 3D with some lights, uh, some cameras. Uh, I inserted two cameras here, the normal one, but also an orthographic one, and I'll get to that a bit later on. Then it goes to a renderer, soft glow if you want, and then you can save it in this case. I'll delete this. All right, um, so the way this actually works is that you can change your text here in the input text file. <laughs> sorry, in the input text node. So here, let's rotate. Uh, let's say, go at an example, All right? In the views, I'm displaying the text, well, with the background here and the actual tile, All right? Uh, when you change things like the text, the fonts and all that type of stuff, it's actually quite handy and fast to just display these nodes. Uh, if you ch show, for instance, the renderer, it will take a while to update, right? So at a certain point, you will need to. You need to know what you're doing. But here, uh, let's let's do it first like this. So um, as you can see, you can change the text. Text you can change the font, etc., the size. Right? But you got to be careful because it will need to fit the canvas here, right? Um, text color uh, as well, of course. So we can change that here as normal now the canvas background right and now we are actually showing the merge 3d i'm just going to uh, time zero or frame zero on the timeline right this is what i consider to be the canvas right in fact it's the canvas plus the text here uh, you can't see it now because it will all be rotated around however if you look at just the wall Right, you see there's a gap. This gap basically ensures you, that you can have the letters in between there that rotates. Right? And if you change uh, the words and search, if it becomes sh shorter, longer, you'll notice that this gap changes alongside, right? or changes to fit the number of characters. Um, so let's go back. Canvas background. So if you want to change this, you can, of course, you can choose whatever whatever color uh, what you'll notice as well if I just briefly uh, show the letter here if you change the canvas it will also change the back of this letter because at the start of the composition of the animation you'll see the back of the letter so that well typically I want that to be integrated into the whole that you don't see that there are actually words hidden there or letters as such Right, so that is uh, the reasoning. Now you could, of course, uh, separate it out. Right? So if you would want to have a different color to start, 
you can override that. So if you go to the cube here, go to the material here right now, you see that it is referencing, in fact, uh, this one here. If you want to get rid of that, you can just get rid of the expressions and then set a bespoke color. All right. Um, so the thing you can also do is change the specular intensity, which is really pulled down here. But if you want to have a, a few highlights, you can change it here. Now, what's important is that when you do it here to the canvas background and to, oh, let's actually set this color back, um, and to the back of the letter, it's good to um, also have the front of the letter with the same specular intensity that gives a bit more consistency in the overall look and feel. And when I say specular intensity, I also mean the specular exponent. So try to align those, but I wanted to give you the option to have different settings, should you want to use that. All right, so uh, that's the first thing. Now, the variable section, pretty important extra rotations, right? So by default, it will rotate 180 degrees. So it will go around the X axis, it will turn around from showing the back of the tile to the front. By default, it gives another rotation. But if you just want to have it just showing, you can do that or you can add rotations. Rotation speeds, Right? If you want it to go faster, you can make it faster. I would advise you to probably not go higher than two. That's already quite fast. Uh, you can also set a Z movement. So as it rotates, it can then move forward. Now, the composition length is very, very important. Uh, this needs to be set to whatever length your composition is, or at least um, that length. So if your composition or your animation is going to be 300 frames, then set it to 300 or higher. But 300 is fine. Random seed, if you want to change the look, like if you don't uh, like the order in which the letters are rotating, you can just choose a different random seed. Rotation direction, right? You can change it here from X to Y. Tile gap, right? This will create a gap between all the tiles. And columns, right, uh, gives the number of tiles that there are in a row. Uh, if you, for instance, want to have more text, you can increase this. Now, that is sort of it from a base perspective in terms of what you can change. But one thing I had omitted so far is something very important. Uh, here, this global end time, uh, that really needs to be set to a very high number. It has to do really with the way this all works. It is making use of the replicate 3D node where there's a time offset, right? And that is actually your composition length. That's the only way you can actually make this work. I won't go into the detail here, but the, uh, the downside here is that your global end time needs to be longer. As you can see here, it goes to, in my case, 10,000. Now, the rule of thumb is really that it needs to be as long as the number of characters in your string, like uh, here, times your composition length. Right, so that is it. Uh, typically, I just have it just at a high number. There's no real downside to it. Right, so very, very important. If you would have a value that is too low here, not all the uh, letters will render. If you would want to use this in DaVinci Resolve, a similar principle would apply. Your clip length would need to be very long, like the example here, 10,000 frames or whatever the exact number would be. Uh, but then you just need to ensure that when you render it out, you just render the portion where your animation takes place. Next one up, um, movement gradient, right? This is really what creates the movement. So this is a gradient. Basically, it, black means uh, the start of the animation, white means the end, as in the letter will be shown, right? And then when the letter goes back, right, back to be hidden, it goes back to black. And here it is done with all kinds of um, keyframes, or not keyframes, they are gradation, gradient points, right, where I change the red channel. Now, you can set things to yourself. Here you've got a little bit of overshooting and such, so that you've got a nice uh, wiggle. So you can just pipe these other examples in. 
which will give you a different type of movement, but play around with it. And then we're nearly there. Here, of course, your light setup, I've, um, uh, let me actually show it now. Here, you've got the perspective view. So for instance, if I want to have a different light setup, you can just pipe one in here. I've got a bunch, there are a bunch of point lights, right? But of course you can add your own. Now the backdrop, right? That is what's behind the canvas, right? So the backdrop is wide now, and that's very important because that will show you what's behind the letters. And then later on, if you apply soft glow, you've got that sort of bright light behind the letters kind of thing, which you saw in some of the examples, all right? So maybe to illustrate best, let, let's change a few things. I already changed the text, uh, but let's now show things uh, from a rendered perspective. So to start with, it will be like this. Now, if for instance, I want to change the specular intensity, I'd set to maybe something like 0 0.2, right? You've got a little bit of that. And I said, let's align this one as well. Right? You won't see that right now, but that will be the specular intensity of the individual characters. Let's have a look here. Maybe we want to have, we want to have it in the Y direction. And uh, let's have a little bit of movement, maybe 0 0.25. So let's play it now. And you won't notice anything in the first 50 frames, then everything is being built up and then your animation will start. Right, you see there sort of the highlights, but that's because of the specular intensity. And there you go. Okay, so if you, for instance, want to change this, oh, well, actually rotation direction, I want to have it over the X axis, then it needs to have a little think about it. And here you can see, all of a sudden it is different. And I said, if you don't like the way they're moving, you can change the random seats and such, right? And if I want that to be a little bit faster, I'll do one or two, maybe. And then if we play it from the start, of course, it can't quite play it real time. So it's still, you can't see this in its true speed, but the animation by itself will be shorter because everything will happen faster. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Now, uh, the other thing I wanted to show was the uh, tile gap, right? So if we go to the start, so there's no gap here, but if you introduce a small gap, like maybe, something like that, right? Then all of a sudden, if you start playing it now, again, it takes a little bit of time before it will start showing. Right? You've got your lettuce going like this. Uh, but like if you have the tile gap a little bit smaller, so, oops, maybe something like this, here you see this happening where you see some lines which are appear to be a little bit brighter. That's really to do with the lights perspective, not that everything is straight. Now you can, and in certain cases it makes sense, um, use the orthographic camera, right? So if in the uh, renderer, you set this to the orthographic one, but here you've got a very flat view. Uh, doesn't work well with perspective, of course, because the orthographic camera removes it. But in certain cases, it can look really quite nice. Uh, I would not have a set movement then because there's no point, right? But then uh, that is basically it. So you can change an awful lot more, right? So this is meant to be a base template, but you can do all kinds of stuff like, you know, the stuff you saw in the intro, right? This is, this I still need to clean up. This shows you how I sometimes work. It's not, all, not always uh, neat and tidy. Um, that's just the way um, I tend to work. Um, but here I actually added in some material notes and started working with some reflections and such. I just had an image from uh, Pexels, right? And that's basically going into reflect note and such. And it can look really, really cool. I said this one will be free for my patrons. Uh, another example here, this is actually very close to the base template, but I had an a camera that is angled a little bit. It changed the lights uh, as well. Um, but 
other than that, yeah, I added a little bit of, you can see it here, a little bump map. And it looks quite classy, I think. Right, so I think that was it for now. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you've got any questions, let me know. And talk to you guys next time. See you later. Bye-bye.